there, thanks for dropping by. My name's Joan, I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the UK. Um, today I'm just going to share with you this little swing card. Um, it sort of opens and opens up again so you can get a nice little message inside. Uh, it's quite simple to make. Um, I am recording this whilst we're going through the uh, Covid um, pandemic. So um, as we're in lockdown at the moment, we're trying to do some online classes now, um, if I was doing this under normal circumstances, I would actually probably use die cuts to cut out my shapes. So I could use a circle, an oval, a heart, whatever. So the technique would be exactly the same. Um, but I've designed this so that anybody can basically take part. So if they don't have um, access to a die cutting machine, they can either use a pair of scissors or um, a knife and ruler or even a trimmer so um, I thought it was quite a nice way to sort of um, uh, get everyone sort of involved so we're going to start off we're going to need I have made a start on this we're going to need um, a C6 base card now um, I'm using lovely lipstick which sadly um, will be leaving us very shortly but um, it is one of my favorite colors and it looks so nice with this project so um, a standard C6 card, it measures 21 centimetres by 14.85 centimetres and then it is scored at 10 and a half. So that's your base card. Okay, you're going to then need a piece of Whisper White card stock. Now this um, measures 20 centimetres by 14.35 centimetres. But this time you're going to score at 10 centimetres and then again at 15 centimetres. And as you can see, it's sort of concertina folded back on itself and then stuck into the inside of our card. So that's the first part you need to do. So now that that's done, um, we are going to do our front piece. Now, um, on of you will find that this particular paper um, looks really nice if it's coloured in so I wanted to do a very very quick demonstration because um, I know some people uh, are not always confident with colouring in and I know it's um, one of those things that most people enjoy doing so it's just a, a couple of little hints and tips really so um, I'm going to do that now just on a, on a little piece of paper and then I'll give you all the measurements for all the other pieces so um, what I've done here, I've actually used um, lovely lipstick and um, Flirty Flamingo, which is the um, colours of the cardstock that I've used. Now these um, are quite tonal, so they actually naturally go together quite well. So <clears throat> if I'm doing colouring, I tend to, uh, my preference probably would be to go for the Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol-based pens and they naturally blend very well together. Now, some projects, um, you know, they, it doesn't work particularly well with or it might be that you don't have any alcohol pens. And again, to make this sort of accessible to everybody, um, I wanted to do it with markers so that um, most people either have markers or pencils and we can use a similar sort of technique. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate this, as I say. So. I'm just taking my lighter of the two colours, in this case flirty, flirty, whoop, in this case flirty flamingo. That was a tongue twister. And I'm literally just adding some colour to all of my petals. Now, if I was using stamping blends to do this, I would work on a single petal at a time, and I also would not work on two petals that are side by side because the nature of alcohol markers is that is that the um, alcohol evaporates so then it naturally has like a natural bleed to it um, these tend not to bleed so much so it, it's um, you can get away with this now and it's quite pretty as it is but as you can see in here the difference between this and this is, is quite noticeable. <clears throat> so I'm just wanting to add some depth to my flowers. So to do that, I'm just going to take my darker colour, which in this case is lovely lipstick, and I'm going to use a flicking motion. And I'm just going to flick from the centre towards the outside of my petal. And as I say, I can work on ones that are next to each other. Um, it, it won't affect this at all. 
again just little flicking motions okay and then going to go back with my lighter one again using flicking motions and you might just have to touch up at the top and going over the top now when you first do it it kind of all looks the same color but as it dries you'll notice that it will get um, lighter towards the top and darker towards the center so I'm just quickly finish that off so you might just need to go over the top just to bring all the color in now um, as you can see instantly that has got um, a darker uh, middle to it now and it will actually lighten as it dries and then in, in the center of these I've just used mango medley so that was basically how I colored my paper I will do some coloring um, videos at some point so I'm gonna put that to one side and here's one I did earlier so um, obviously that takes a little bit of time so I didn't think you'd want to sit there watching me do that all evening so um, my first layer, which is my flirty flamingo layer, this measures 13.35 by 9 centimetres. And this DSP layer measures 12.85 by 8.5 centimetres. OK, so I'm going to start cutting my window from my first piece and then my middle and then our, then our card base. So I'm going to do the first layer using my paper trimmer. Now, um, if you're not very confident with this, then I would say probably don't use this method. You might be better with a pair of scissors. Um, but just so you know, we can um, you can see how the different sort of things are done. So I'm going to start off with my top line here, and I want to line this up on this edge at one and a half centimeters. Okay, so I. I've got one and a half centimetres here, but I also want to come in one and a half centimetres from each edge. Now, that's not easy to see on this particular trim, trimmer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly go to where I think it roughly is, and then I can always cut it a little bit further a bit later on. So I'm just going to, with my blade, just cut a slit across there so if you can see that I'm now going to turn it 90 degrees I'm going to put that at one and a half and just see where I'm up to now this length down here is eight and a half so again I'm going to twist it move that to eight and a half and then put another line. So you can see all my cutting lines are gonna line up in a moment. So I'm gonna go back to here, that's one and a half, and I'm gonna cut now, I can see where that eight and a half line is, okay? I'm gonna twist it again, now that's coming away fine. So that's one and a half this side, and again, I'm just gonna go down to where I can see that eight and a half centimetre line is. It's a little bit of a fiddle on, on a trimmer. Um, obviously you need to um, be a bit careful with it, but it, it, it's very doable and it, it's not something, um, you know, that would put me off. Now can you see it's just nicked in that corner. So rather than me um, going with the trimmer again I am just going to take my scissors just to take that last piece out so that piece I would keep because I'd make a gift tag on a present or something okay so as you can see I've now cut out that window there has been a slight overcut here but once that's glued down you're not going to see it so don't panic too much if you do go a little bit too far I mean, obviously, try and be as accurate as you can, but it is quite difficult. So, you know, see how it goes. Then I'm going to bring in my um, piece here. And this time I'm going to do it just using a pair of scissors, just so you can see how it's possible to do it all different ways. OK, so I'm just going to turn that over to the back. 
and I want to measure two centimeters in from each side. So if you remember on that first piece, it was one and a half centimeters. And I've actually done that one, one and a half. Let's do that one again. So two centimeters in from either side. Okay, so you can ignore that line there. Okay, so it's two centimeters in from each side. And then I want to do two centimeters from one end. So that's four of my squares here. And then I want to do eight and a half. So I'm just going to move it to the corner so that I've got my measurements. At eight and a half centimetres. And draw a line. Okay, so albeit that's a bit of a wonky line. My finger obviously got in the way. Let's just straighten that up. So remember, this is the reverse, so you're not going to see this. So what I want to do now is just to take my scissors and very carefully just make sure that your fingers are not in the way. And I'm just going to pierce, using the end of my scissors, just a hole in the middle. That enables me to get into the centre of my rectangle. And I tend to remove these pieces as I go. Okay, so that now enables me to get in with my scissors and cut on that line. I do tend to get rid of these bits as I go, just because it removes the bulk. You just take your time. You can always go back. I can see I've gone a little bit wonky there, so I shall go back to that in a moment. Sometimes it's difficult to get your scissors a certain angle, so quite often I then go back the other way if I've got a little extra bit that I just want to remove. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So if I now take my patterned piece and lay that over the top, so you see I'm going to have a border around the outside and then a border which hopefully will be roughly or should be the same size as the border on the outside, which it is. So I'm just going to glue that down. Going to carefully lay that over the top. Okay, so now that's all stuck in place. Now I want to cut my window actually from my card base. So if I bring that back, now what you, you could do if you wanted to is to measure in again, a bit like we did on this, this pink version. But the problem is if your score line is very slightly different to what mine is, for example, um, it's not gonna be in the middle. So what I suggest you do is to hold it over the top of your base card 
and when you're happy that that's where you want it just draw a light pencil line in the middle and you can move that and then we can see this is where we're going to cut out now if possible you want to keep this part whole um, because this is the part that's going to um, actually form this part here now um, if you don't, it's not the end of the world, we can cut another piece. But I'm going to try and keep it whole if I can. And this time I'm going to use a knife and a ruler. Now, um, I have got a grid sheet under here which I know it's going to cut through, but I'm not worried about that at the moment. I'd rather just be able to demonstrate. So I'm going to lay my ruler down. Don't ask me why, but I always lay my ruler down upside down when I do this part. It's just a weird thing that I do. Um, so and then I'm going to take my knife and cut between the two pencil marks I'm going to twist it and I'm going to do the opposite side now the reason I do that is just to give it stability because if you go round by the time you get to number three here um, it's kind of getting a little bit out of shape so I tend to do it this way and then I know that it's going to remain stable whilst I'm cutting the other two sides. So I've cut those two. I'm going to turn it again. And also, when you're cutting with a knife, always cut into what would be uh, the waste area. I know I've said we're going to use this part, but um, there's nothing worse than cutting into your actual card itself. So this is my waste area because ordinarily that would probably go in the bin or be used for a greeting or something so that's why I want to cut into this area I'm going to turn it again and I'm going to cut my final one here okay and hopefully that should pop out which it does so there we go so this is now always going to fit in here because obviously it's been cut out of here whereas if you cut another piece obviously it might not necessarily fit exact so if you can save that bit it's good i'm just going to rub out my pencil marks okay I'll put that to one side so now what i need to do is to glue my um, patterned piece onto the front of my card here okay so I'm just going to glue that now and again you'll know it will fit because you used it as a guide to cut your actual rectangle from I'm going to open it flat I think it'd be easier okay so this is going to go level with the edges and in turn, hopefully, then you should all be lined up elsewhere. Now, if you find that it is slightly out, you can always go back and have another little trim. Um, but I think you'll find it's absolutely fine. So that's the front of my card. So now all I need to do is to um, stick this piece onto my inside piece here. Now, the way I tend to do that is to hold this flat and just add glue to this half where the fold part is so I've just added glue to that part I'm then going to pop my rectangle into the hole it came out of make sure it's all straight okay and then I can lift that and then I know that that is in the correct place okay so now I'm going to stamp my greeting. So you're going to need um, a little piece of Whisper White. So this measures uh, four centimetres by five and a half centimetres. And I'm just going to stamp my greeting in uh, Memento ink. And this particular greeting I've taken from the waterfront set. And it says, every little kindness makes the world brighter, which I thought was quite a nice sentiment. Okay. 
and then I just took um, a black, uh, this is a black journaling pen. Um, so I'm going to use the thinner one. Um, or you can just use any kind of black felt tip, really. And I just added some faux stitching just to the edges, just to take away the plainness, really. Okay, so that's done. Now I just need to put this onto my um, card front. And um, for this, I actually used 3D foam um, just to give it an, another dimension, really. So I'm just going to stick that onto the back. Bring my card in. So I'm just going to line this up in the middle. Excuse the pitter patter of doggy feet. So there we go. So that's your card finished. So as I say, it gives a nice sort of area for you to write a message, um, but it also makes a nice little uh, slightly different card. So hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you soon. Bye.